everybody uh, on this lovely day in Washington, D.C. And for Margie's benefit, it's sunny and a nice spring day and warm. And actually, Margie, we have fresh strawberries in our farmer's market. Anybody up for strawberry risotto? Look how red they are. They're gorgeous. Um, this is the last uh, meeting of our 2020, 2021 season. And we're going out in style with a delicious meal that we're, I'm sure we're all looking forward to being prepared, to being prepared by Najmia. And we're really fortunate to have the recipes that we can follow along with. Um, I just wish Zoom would, had a smell feature, which unfortunately yes. it does not. So we won't be able to inhale the delicious aromas, but we do have the recipes. <clears throat> so if we are so inspired, we can prepare them later and enjoy them. Um, for any questions about um, technique mm -hmm. or what Najmia is doing, please yeah. put those in chat and they will be answered um, later. So any questions uh, during the demo, please put those in chat and we will get to them. Uh, somebody may answer them during the demo or they may be held until after the demo is, is over. And um, I'm going to turn this over to Judy now to formally introduce Najmia and then we will move on to the demo. Thank you, Pam. My great pleasure to introduce Najmia who has cooked, traveled, and adapted uh, Persian techniques to Western tastes for the last 40 years. She's been hailed as the guru of Persian cuisine um, and her food of life, which first appeared in 1986, was called the definitive book on Iranian cooking. Well, they ain't seen nothing yet because Najima went on to surpass herself over and over breaking her own records. Um, her most recent book, Cooking in Iran, Regional Recipes and Kitchen Secrets, was selected as one of the best cookbooks of fall 2018 by the New York Times. It is a stunning book. It's a tome. It's detailed and clearly a labor of love. For her chow presentation, Najvia will demonstrate two Persian recipes, which are in the newsletter, and um, the Following the demo, she'll present a photo illustrated talk about her travels through Iran that helped to inspire the book. And there'll be a Q&A at the end, or as Pam said, um, you can put it in the chat and we'll see when it can be um, worked in. The recipe for spicy sweet and sour fish with dates is from the Persian Gulf region. And the recipe for plain rice, which is anything but plain, is from the Caspian Sea region. Um, the Tadig, oh my goodness, everyone fights for the Tadig. <laughs> I'll confess that I am a longtime fan. I have all of her cookbooks in my collection. The recipes are just enticing and delicious. I can't wait to watch and learn. And as Pam said, this is the last meeting of our current season. We already have the first few months of our fall season planned and we'll be, be, we will begin with John Birdsell, the author of the recent James Beard biography entitled The Man Who Ate Too Much. So please uh, pay your dues, get the newsletter, and sign up now through our PayPal link on the website and make sure you don't miss anything. So without further ado, let me turn this over to Najmia, and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy. <laughs> um, welcome to my Zoomy kitchen. It's an honor to share my recipes and my journey to Iran three years ago to you guys. And I want to thank Cece Williams, my colleague and my dear friend for inviting me. Uh, we're going to make a very plain rice with tadi in one pot because uh, the traditional way of making rice is you parboil the rice first, then you make the tadi, you need a few uh, steps before to get to this. But here, um, uh, uh, is anyone is cooking with along with me, or should I? No, no one. So okay, then you guys watch it, and then we're going to make uh, the fish with dates, which is uh, from the Persian Gulf. They love dates, so uh, let's just start the rice. I soaked the rice. I washed. I soaked the rice. Then I'm going to put it in the uh, this is about three cups of rice, and this is about 
six cups of water. So for every cup of rice, you need two cups of water, okay? I washed it and I, I, I washed my rice first because basmati rice is old rice, so you need to wash them thoroughly. And I soaked them for 30 minutes. And we put it in the water over a high heat. And at this step, you can add anything you want. You, and if you want to add any spices or even rose water in your rice, which I love that. You can. How much? Uh, about uh, about uh, two tablespoons rose water, if you want. If you can get me my rose water, I can put it there too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I'm going to put two teaspoons salt. But if you want to put less salt yourself, that's better. But since rice cultivated in rice cultivated in salt and water is the best, you give it back. So you close in the circle. So salt brings the best part of the rice. So I'm going to put some salt. I always use sea salt, so or kosher salt. Fine, I, fine sea salt. Fine sea salt, exactly. Not, uh, and then I'm going to put just that much of rose water. Smells so good. And I want you guys to uh, get the rose water of don't get the rose water from the pharmacy. Rose water now, I noticed uh, even Giant brought rose water and um, uh, pomegranate and molasses and orange blossom water. So you want it this kind, either Persian or this is Gortas. These are, I found that this Gortas has better perfume. And then you stir it. You're going to put it all the way. No, no, yeah, no. That's high. Okay. Um, I was going to put it on the other one, but I thought this is better. And you're going to stir your rice gently because you don't want to break your rice. You know, Persian, they don't like mushy rice. So stir it gently. This is non-stick pot, and you should have a wooden spoon or silicone spoon. So Why do you it. stir it at all? You stir it because you have salt in it. This way you dissolve your salt. If you don't dis dis stir it gently now, you realize that at the bottom part, there will be, the bottom part will be salty. All the salt goes down. So you want to stir it gently and until the rice and bring the rice to a boil. So while we are waiting for the rice, I'm going to show you how to make uh, my favorite Persian golf quick pickles. So it, it's a one of the uh, delicious pickle. And the secret of this pickle I'll show you, because it takes time to, to just bring. You put, uh, I'm using Persian cucumber, uh, which doesn't have much of the seeds. And I like the skin. You can remove the skin if you wish. And um, this is red onions. I find a red onion has more flavor for this pickle. It's very much similar to the pickle that I had in uh, Persian Gold. In, actually, I had it in Boucher. And that is uh, rice vinegar. It's about uh, four tablespoons rice vinegar. Not, I'm sorry, it's not rice vinegar. It's apple vinegar, apple cider vinegar. You can put rice vinegar too, but it's apple cider vinegar. And we're going to put about two teaspoons. It's because this is pickle. We're going to put about two teaspoons fine sea salt. The secret of this uh, pickle is I toast I toast uh, coriander seeds. When you toast the coriander seed, I wish you were here. The aroma is lovely. You toast the coriander seeds and you put in this as much as you want. What does that mean, as much as you want? It's so, not a very precise measure. Okay, uh, you can put two tablespoons, four tablespoons. I like it more, even half a, uh, half a cup. So, it, because afterwards, if it is toasted, it, it has a beautiful aroma and lovely taste. See, this is our pickles, finished.
the water is I'm gonna stir the water in one more time. Oh aroma is lovely here in my kitchen. And You stare at this and I'm going to put it right here. This has a, you can make this the day before, but I, I like it when it's fresh looking. So it's crunchy, but it, and the best things about this, you can keep it the leftover for Next day, so this is our pickles. It's ready. And my rice is starting to boil. boil. We boil it until there is no more water. So we need time. For this and before that, so I'm gonna dust my Nathan, can gonna, you explain no more water? What is that? So there is no all the water absorbed by the rice. When all the water absorbed by the rice. That's the time we reduce the heat when we cook it for another 40 minutes. So for, uh, for the next recipe, I'm going to, this, for this recipe, you can use any kind of fish you like, but salmon works very well. I don't like the skin of salmon, but if you like the skinny salmon, keep it. I, I, no skin, no bones, to be sure there is no bone left. And then I'm going to dust my um, fish. One tablespoon flour, any kind of flour. If you're gluten-free, you can have oat flour, or uh, you can have uh, rice. rice flour. Yeah, rice flour works very well. Almonds? No, not almonds so much. Rice flour works. Mm -hmm. So if I make any mistake, this man will tell you. <laughs> Ashmi, we need to see the food. Okay. What do you uh we have have your husband point the camera down? Okay. The rice is cooking. Show the pickle. Can you see the rice? How's that? Is that better? Do you see the pickle? No. no. Hold the pickles up. How about that? No, can't see it. You you're not seeing that this it's there. Oh, hold it up to this. How about this? Do you see the pickle? Uh oh. We don't see it on our screen. Do you see oh, me? Oh, hold on. Do you oh, see that me? Oh, that seems to have turned itself off. Oh, hold on. Let's see what's up. Okay. It's playing it on me. <laughs> <laughs> no, it should be. It should be on. It says recording. Watch, watch it. I, How about yeah. here? Oh, Do you see okay. me? Now you we can me? see. Yes. Do you see That's the rice? Yeah. But now we're focusing more on you and not. Do you see the rice? We cannot see any of the countertops wow. now. Wow. Well, no, because the countertop, how about now? No. Do you see that? No. Well, my no, I don't know what the, the I'm seeing oh. it here. It's to do with the audio being off. Maybe turn, turn off the idea that the speaker gets the prominence. I think maybe, yeah. Let's see. Uh, well, uh, what's going on? Do you see me? Yes. Okay. What if we do this? Do you see this? That, uh, that, yes. Now we can see all, all the food. Okay, yes. the rice is cooking, and this is the pickle. Okay, but when you, when you begin speaking, it, uh -huh. it centers you in the screen. Yeah. I think, Pat, I think the solution is to turn off the Focus on this on the speaker. Uh -huh. That's good right there. Whoops. Yeah, that's it. Just hold it, darling, for just yeah, I can minutes. do that. But you okay. Got... You see the rice is cooking? No. No, they don't. It because it turns itself off. 
because of the sound. I think it has to do with the... How about now? The problem is they're trying sometimes saying something. There is a second camera still. Yeah, can't you see the second camera? I don't have a view of that, that other camera shot at all. I can see it here, so that's weird. Um, so I'm going to turn we, off the video why don't, why don't we... and turn it on again. Darling. Still not? How about just using this? I can turn this one off, sure. Yeah, just using this one. Okay, do you see that ice? Yes. Good. That's fine, yes. You see the pickle? No. You see the pickle? Hold it up to. You see, it keeps trying to focus on you. Okay. They don't see the pickle? Nope. Okay, do you see the pickle? Yeah, yes. Now we do, we can see all the elements. Okay, good. All the elements. But as soon as you moved it, then now uh, the food went my, out just, of the camera shot. Darling, just hold it. Yeah. Okay. Right. okay. Okay. I have flour, turmeric. I think if we're going to do this manually, I have to turn off the follow feature on this. Salt, just hold two minutes. No, it doesn't, it doesn't show it. You see, it's trying to adjust for that. I put salt and pepper, freshly ground pepper. I grind mm. everything this morning. It doesn't work. Right. I'm just going to do it. Why don't you just focus it here, darling? But the problem is it's trying to adjust for that. There it is. Now it's adjusting. Okay. And it goes back. As soon as you talk, it goes back up. Okay. I think the solution is to turn off the speaker focus. Uh huh. And well, Pat can do that. If I turn, turn off the. This, that, that it should focus on the speaker. Okay. Because it's trying to do the job, the camera is trying to do that itself. And yeah. it's getting. I don't know how I, how I can override that. So okay, let's just focus here, darling, to yeah. show them it's no problem. Okay. okay. <laughs> so the. All the water is absorbed. You see this, guys? No, because as soon as you talk. It okay, I won't, I won't talk then. <laughs> you see that here? Everyone yes. see? Okay, good. I'm going to put some oil on it because we want it tadi. If you don't put oil, we don't have tadi. And I like to add. No, it's not showing the picture. Let's see. If Why I don't you? I, I, I don't understand why they don't see this view. Why don't you concentrate on this? Can, can you see this view? No. Focus on the rice. I mean, I can see it here. I don't know why I'm seeing demo. It's weird. There is there's a second camera that's focusing on the food. In gallery view, it does show up. You have to look for it. Yeah. And then, and then if this, if the audience will turn off speaker view and turn on gallery view, uh, that they'll be watching uh, two little pictures. But at least they'll see both things that she's trying that are that are trying to focus. Um, yeah, does, does, does your does the camera that you're using have an automatic focus? Because it seems like the camera is automatically drawn to your face when you speak. Yes, that's what it's doing. It automatically moves. Okay, that would have to be turned off at the camera. Zoom can't do that. Okay, that's, I can try and do that. Hold on a second.
Does that help any? No, I think I have to turn that off under more. Hold on. Settings. Camera control here. Hold on. Uh, manual. Okay. All right, try that now. It's beautiful. You know how you see it? Yes. Perfect. And I'm going to put a, a tablespoon of coconut butter on the top of my rice. This is the rice now. I'm going to steep the rice for about uh, 40 minutes. Before doing that, do you see me or not? Yes. yes they see? Oh, perfect. What, what, what are you doing? I'm trying to wrap a cover, the cover of the rice, so and steep the rice. Why do you want to wrap? Because this remove this this the, the steam. It prevent the steam to escape, so the rice cooks inside. Steep the rice. Won't the lid do that? No, you need to add, uh, have a towel so, so the absorbed all this. Okay, guys, in 40 minutes, we're going to have. Uh, you want me to take that? Technique. No, I'm going to do it. Okay. Hey, Siri, set the timer for 40 minutes. Minutes. Okay, now we're going to make our, uh, we're going to sear the fish first. Before doing that, I mix salt, pepper, turmeric, and flour is here, and I'm going to dust the fish both sides. ask uh -huh. if uh, I at, at one of the participant suggestions I changed the, the view uh, and I want to I want to know if everyone is seeing it okay everyone's seeing that yeah. yes Particularly, yeah. Sheila do you see what you recommended yes I see that she's dusting the fish okay 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 great awesome. I'll shut up <laughs> dusting the fish okay in fact, I see two views of it, on the right and on the left. Mm -hmm. uh, for those of you, it's salt, pepper, turmeric, dusting the fish. I'm going to sear my fish first. That's a very easy recipe to make. Doesn't take long. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil. Do you see the? Do you see this? The yeah, pan. Yeah. Okay. Should be all the way. Working with it. Should cut. So if you have any question for me now, you have any concern, I dust the fish. It's all pepper and turmeric. I have cayenne and I have fenugreek leaves. 
I'm going to show you. This is a very special leaves that Iranian use a lot. Please buy from Iranian store because I bought it from other store. It wasn't exactly the same leaves. So this fenugreek leaves. Dry, has, it, you can get fresh too if you want, but I found it's like two herbs like mint and fenugreek is the best when they're dry. When they're dry, they are more potent and it's more um, aromatic. So this one, we're gonna put it afterwards. And I um, peated the, the, the date and I sliced them, five dates. And I have some jalapeno because in Persian Gulf, they use a lot of spices. Yeah, someone says that they buy fenugreek leaves from Rodman's. Uh -huh. The and Rodman's then, a kind of magic store, it has yeah. everything. Oh, fair, fair. <laughs> and I have cilantro, about one cup. You can put as much as you want. And another thing I have, is I ha I'm putting cayenne. Cayenne is, is it hot enough? You just swear your thing. Yeah. And I'm using cayenne. I'm supposed to go as one teaspoon, but uh, my husband doesn't like too much spicy, so I, I'm going to put it about a quarter of a teaspoon. But one teaspoon make it much more tastier. Well, don't do it for my sake. Yeah, well, I mean, because you can the recipe. Yeah. And I have vinegar here. This is interesting about this recipe. You can find this recipe in Persian Gulf as well as in North Iran by the Caspian. They use um, sour orange, vinegar, or tamarind as a sour agent. So, and the date is the, the sweetness. In, in, by the Caspian, they don't use dates. By, by Persian Gulf, definitely, they use date. They, they use date in every recipe. OK, we're going to sear the fish. It's not hot enough. I'm sure it's on. Yeah, it's on, darling. Are you using dates instead of date syrup? I'm going to use both. I'm going to show you. Okay. I'm going to show you. Uh, actually, there is date syrup. There is date molasses, which they are different. Is anybody knows what's the difference between date molasses and date syrup? It's it's a wonderful uh, image uh, in. Um, by the Persian Gulf in Boucher when I was there. There was a season of date. They were harvesting date and they were um, they were harvesting date and uh, they stack all the dates over each other in a big basket and the basket has a special hole goes to a big bowl and when the dates are fresh, when you stack one over each other, when they stay for 24 hours, all the syrup goes down in this void and that's fantastic. The real date syrup is delicious. But date molasses is they cook the dates and they pass it through seeds. So that's the molasses, that's the difference between the date you have some of that dead syrup. Yes, I, yes, I bought this from Whole Food. This is dead, dead syrup. And I'm going to put about two tablespoons in my rice vinegar. Najma, uh -huh. can you recommend your favorite grocery stores in the area? Actually, Yekta in Rockway is my favorite. Okay. Which, which I managed to get. Uh, I got some donation for our fundraising in springtime uh, from them for our, for the package. So Yekta Delhi is there is my favorite. Which one was it? I'm sorry, I didn't hear. Yekta Y E K T E. Yekta Delhi and Market. They have now. They make uh, food there. You can carry. They have carriers, and uh, the market they expanded and. Uh, uh, they're pretty good. The price is pretty good. 
uh, so you can get it there. And right through the pipe. Right through the pipe, yes. See? I see the fish. With my garlic is in. I have to get my garlic. And Najima, Najima, yes. Um, the rice that you're using is it? Was it pre-soaked? Uh, yes, I soaked it for thirty minutes. Okay, and you washed it before soaking it. Yes. What I do, I put the rice in here. Mix it. The rice in the sieve. I wash it and put it in the sieve and I soak it like that. So when I want it to, I lift the rice this way. Okay? Great. And what kind of rice do you use? Yes, I use in pie rice. I think it's the best one. In pie. E M P I R E. In pie. They have 10 pounds and 20 pounds. And I get the rice and, and then I put some salt in it and I put it in the container and I keep them. Okay. Thank we, you. We sear our fish. I'm going to put it in a plate. Do you see that? I'm going to put it in a plate. Then I'm going to make my make my sauce. You see that, guys? Yes. Okay. Now I'm making my sauce. I put about five cloves of garlic, which I already grated, peel and grated. Five cloves. Mm. Is it good? While I'm waiting for that, I'm going to put about two tablespoons of um, syrup. In my bed One and two. Can you smell that? Oh, it smells so good here. We put a little bit more rice. The smell mm -hmm. of fried garlic is so good. <laughs> Najma, uh -huh. what do you think about baking the fish? You can bake the fish. You put this, uh, put some oil. Yes. Put the fish. Saute your. I like to saute the garlic, but you can if yes. you don't. You just grate the garlic, put it on top. You can okay. do that. And I'm going to put uh, half a teaspoon of cayenne. And, and I'm going to put my apple vinegar. You can put all these things in your baking sheet. I have done it too. It's shorter. What temperature do you bake it at? 350. Actually, if you want it, uh, 450. For fish, if it's higher heat, shorter time is much better. So what do you suggest? 450, about 15 minutes. It depends what kind of fish you have. What kind of oven? 
I want them 450. Okay, we have fenugreek, we have garlic, we have cayenne in this. I'm gonna add the dates. Must have been something in there that went up your nerves. Did you put any pepper? Good day on Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'm going to cook back the fish. problem. We're going to let it <coughs> simmer until the sauce thicken. Yeah, I'm going to Okay. Thank you. This is, I'm going to put some jalapeno. At the end, before serving, we're going to put some um, two minutes. I have to come back. Okay. Najmi, I can read you a couplet from uh, Hafez. My friend, hold back your heart from enemies. Drink shining wine with handsome friends like these. With arts initiates, undo your collar. Stay buttoned up with ignoramuses. <laughs> Very cute. Let me see. Maybe we have another one. Uh, here's one from um, an Iranian poet from the 14th century, Jahan Malek Khatun, a woman, princess. With wine beside the gentle flowing brook, this is best. We drawn from sorrow in some quiet nook, this is best. Our life is like a flower that blooms for 10 short days. Bright laughing lips, a friendly, fresh face look. This is best. Okay, we have the chef back. It's good to have husband to read poems. You don't cover your fish? No. We're going to let the fish cook, and I think I can start my, because we have, do uh, you have any question for me? <laughs> Do you have any question for me? So, because we are done, 
the you fish. Said that, you said that uh, this could be used with any fish, but is there one that would be more tra more traditional in this? Yes, gru grouper. 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 Uh, grouper is more traditional mm -hmm. fish for the Persian Gulf. Thank you. Uh, they use. Uh, I like salmon, and it's easy to get. I love uh, fresh salmon, so. That's why I use sand. Yes. Any question for me before? I I'd start? like to ask about the fenugreek leaves. Um, I'm, I'm in Germany, so I, I don't have access to a Persian store where I am. I do have a Turkish store. Is mm -hmm. there a substitute that I could use? Fenugreek seeds, you can substitute and grind them, but you have to grind them very fine. Fenugreek okay. seeds. But uh, you can get uh, sadaf.com. You can get, uh, could you bring a chair for me? No. Sadaf.com. You can get uh, now everything through internet. It's very easy. You can get uh, Not for Germany, maybe. Oh, is it Germany? Yeah, she's in Germany. Okay. Amazon. But, Amazon also carries everything. But I bet you the Turkish stores in Germany have them. So well, you, I'll ask. I don't think they do. I because I know the the German word for it, and I've never seen it there. But I'll yeah, ask. Possibly. Yeah, because you know, during six in sixteenth century, Ottoman uh, Empire, they brought Persian chef. So there are a lot of similarity. Like we bring Jack Pepin to America, they brought Persian chef to for the Ottoman Empire. Okay. So, and so there is a lot of influence of Persian food in Turkish food. And I bet you they might have fenugreek leaves. They might have even have fresh in the market. I'll ask. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so our, our fish is cooking, our, our rice is cooking, our salad is made, our pickles is made. So we wait, do you see the fish? Yes. Guys, do you see the fish? Yes. This looks so delicious already. Yeah. Beautiful. That's that. You let it cook until the syrup, uh, the, 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 the liquid become like a syrup. And then you're done and you can taste it. And, and I'm going to uh, go ahead and, and uh, Okay, darling, can we start there? Uh, you, you've got uh, 19 minutes on the rice. Uh, okay, that's fine. We, yeah. we, we do it. I show you the rice at the end of our talk, okay? And you're going to go into the slide presentation? Yeah, I go to slide because this way, if you have any questions, go watch it for me. Okay, I'll get you more time. Okay. Is it ready? No. Okay. I have to see if they see the slides also. You see the slides, guys? Yes. You see my mom next to me? Yes. Okay. Uh, I was born and raised in Iran. I always loved to cook, but my mother wouldn't allow me in the kitchen. She said, go to university, get your education. You will have plenty of time to cook. I came to United States after my high school when I was 18 or 19. And then I had, uh, after seven years, I returned to Iran and handed my uh, master's degree in education to my mother. And she allowed me to cook. <laughs> after uh, I learned all I could learn, and she allowed me in the kitchen. And I, I learned whatever I could from my mother. She was a salé cook. She didn't like pastry. But my aunt was a pastry chef. So I went to my aunt. I record all I could. And uh, in uh, 1978, I got married. And I did, oh, well. <laughs> 
<clears throat> At the end of 1979, as the Iranian revolution took a more fundamentalist turn, my husband and I fled to France. The climate, the aroma was the place, France was the place that I decided to become a cook. And I took some cooking classes. Then I decided to learn from my neighbor, next door neighbor. Uh, the cooking class, when they taught me how to make ratatouille, it took forever. They cook every element separately and then they combine together. My neighbor, she took a clay pot, she chopped everything, she put it in the pot, then she, as they say, Hamas, she took some rose, rosemary, some thyme, some um, bay leaves from her garden and she put it on top and she put a lot of salt and pepper and olive oil and just put it in her outdoor clay, wood fire, wood fire oh God. After an uh, hour and a half, she removed it. Oh, the aroma, the flavor was so delicious. Without fuss, very simple, she cooked that. So I decided to stop going to the cooking class and I learned from her. She taught me a lot about Provencal cooking, which is very similar to Persian food, actually. I was very, uh, uh, very, surprised but after I did a lot of research I realized it because of uh, uh, Provence and Nice is next to Italy and there are a lot of back and forth from uh, from Iran to Italy during the Silk Road there was a lot of back and forth so there's a lot of similarity between Italian food and Persian food we gave them a lot we took a lot from them and uh, of course, between China, Italy, Iran, Iran was at the center of the Silk Road. China was in the east and Italy was in the west. So there was a lot of back and forth. So that's the, the story of my cooking in France. In 1983, in 1983, we immigrated to America in France, we were refugee, but in America, we consciously made a decision to immigrate to America, where I wrote my first cookbook in English, Cook Food of Life. I said it every place, but no one wanted to publish Persian cookbook because during the hostages, there was a lot of animosity still there, but uh, nobody was interested. So my husband and I decided to have our own publishing house. So my husband uh, published my first cookbook, Food of Life. And then uh, I received a lot of feedback. And it, then I started, I started to really do the serious research on Persian food. I read everything was was available to me all the persian texts all persian texts and I, I read all the literature there's a lot of my recipes come from the literature which is not in the cookbook and uh, i wanted to see uh, uh, really what is persian foods all about i realized that persian miniature persian food persian music there is, a, there, is a, there is something in common between the art of Persian cooking. And I didn't realize it. India learned a lot about Persian food. Before 13th century, Indian food wasn't so um, uh, elaborated that now you see it. I noticed Turkish food is not. So what, Persian food was influenced by Turkish, Italian. So I learned a lot. Uh, but for, for 35 years, while I was writing so many cookbooks, like my Silk Road cooking, a vegetarian journey, I became vegetarian for a year. Then I realized it is not for me. I, then I became fishitarian. And then um, from Persia to Napa, wine at the Persian table. This is the only Middle Eastern book that... Uh, 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 
pair wine with Persian food or Middle Eastern food. Then I did Happy Nowruz, cooking with children to celebrate Nowruz. Uh, my children, when they grow up, they say, Mom, all those, this interesting you did with us when we were growing up, you should write it so other kids, uh, other uh, second generation Iranian kids, they can enjoy that. So that's, this book has become popular among the Iranians. And when my kids were in college, uh, after the college, they went both California. And I noticed that during the weekend, they, bunch of the, with a bunch of their friends, they go to the farmer market and they shop, they come and cook. I realized that this younger generation, they are really yearning for a good, simple recipe. So I wrote this book, book for my own children, um, which, uh, you know, between, between 25 and 35 at that time. Now they're 40 and 36, 37 actually. Uh, so this book, it's uh, made Persian food simple. Uh, a lot of complicated dishes become simple. And actually this is very popular among um, young, the, among the college student even after college, they write to me, not just only Persian. I was surprised this because of Tadig, a lot of uh, American kids really likes to now uh, to uh, try to make Tadig simple way. While I had this, uh, doing all this book, I had this fantastic dream to go to Iran, to meet the cooks, to share kitchens and tables, and taste scents that convey the very essence of Iran. It took me two years of planning and three years of traveling to write this book. What touched my heart the most were the women of Iran. They were strong, tolerant, and hardworking. I met them almost everywhere during my travel. On the steps of the university, do you know that 51% of the uh, university students are women in Iran now? That they are after revolution because there was a lot of suppression. I think they work harder, harder, and they accomplish more and more than before revolution. I met them uh, in Caspian you know, at the rice patties, in the field, uh, tea field, in the saffron field, in barberry groves. Do you know that saffron and barberry groves next to each other in, in northwest region, in Khorasan? Standing in bread lines after a full day of work, weaving carpet while taking care of their kids at home, going to market. They're buying cash. Cash is a sour agent, doesn't have much of fat, is a byproduct of milk. The milk become yogurt and yogurt become cash and the cash become black cash, which is very sour. They're selling it in this market, green cash, white cash, and black cash, which is one of the wonderful uh, ingredients of Persian food. I'm gonna put the reduce it. Yeah, yeah, so it doesn't. Um, The cooking for the family and taking care of the children. His family invited me, they cooked. Oh, adorable family. And she's making bread for the whole village. And she's making bread for her or for village. Uh, taking home fresh fish from the market. Gathering at the restaurant. The woman on the left, she is the co-owner of this elaborate Persian restaurant in Tehran. Now, let me tell you about Iran. 
Iran is divided in several plateaus, separated by high mountain ranges, running west to east and north to south. Uh, the, to the south is Caspian, uh, to the north is, a, is Caspian Sea, and in the, in the south is Persian Gulf. Each region has its own climate and its own ingredient, and as a result, have their own food culture. That was fascinating for me. I wanted to see the diversity and commonality of these regions. So in my book, I divided every region, and I give you the recipes or the specialty of that region. I'm giving you the spice they use region. I am using it sometime mentality and of, of that region, which was fascinating. Uh, and history too. And it was fascinating because there was a lot of chauvinism. Every region, they said, our food is the best, which I love that. It's very cute. Yeah. I started my first trip in Tehran. I am from Tehran. It's, Tehran is the uh, it's a, a capital of Iran. It's very cosmopolitan, like any major cities. Greater Tehran has a population of 16 million, perhaps now more than 16 million. It's very cosmopolitan. You can get best Chinese food, Japanese food. You can get best hamburger and pizza. So it's very cosmopolitan. Any kind of food you want is there. And it's very delicious. I was very surprised. But not Persian food is the main source of food? No. Uh, the people at home, the youth eats a lot of uh, fast foods outside. But the best food you can get still in these countries is food at home. This is a Tajrish Bazaar in north of Iran. I you want to see Tehran. this. North of Tehran. Um, yes, north of Tehran. Uh, I am cooking sheep head and trotters. They call it Kale Pache with Agha Ismail in his restaurant. I'm going to show you some photos of street vendors. Uh, these photos uh, been, was taken uh, early 1900s. So this, I want you to see the, the differences between Tehran of 100 years ago and now. It's totally different. Rice with lamb kebab is carrying. Ice cream peddler, fig peddlers, barbary rice peddlers, bicyclists delivering stacked trays of chilo kebab, rice with kebab on bicycle. <laughs> I don't know. Go back 100 years ago. Ask him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this, this is Albor's Mountain, which is very interesting. Tehran is uh, 15 minutes to a uh, ski resort and one hour to, uh, uh, to the sea by the Kildare. So Tehran is very, has a very special geography. Here I'm cooking with Zari Khanum in Rasht. Rasht is one of the major city by the Caspian, which I love. This is the Rasht daily market. Fish market, they, they, have, they have white fish, like rock fish, branzino fish. That's very common in this area. Garlic. Garlic is everywhere. Every dish by the Caspian, they have garlic. They eat so much garlic. And baby garlic, they even have baby garlic, which is like a walnut, it's so tasty. On a typical Caspian table, you see fresh garlic. They put garlic in every dish, and also they serve fresh baby garlic on the plates. I love that. This is black garlic, uh, this is pickle. When the garlic pickle for seven years become black and sweet, which is 
if any Iranian serve you black garlic, you 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 must be very dear to them because they usually they don't serve it uh, because they have to wait for seven years. What I was uh, surprised by the Caspia in the uh, at the market you can find all kind of varieties of of, of eggs, quail eggs, duck eggs was big. <clears throat> And besides chicken eggs, so it was lovely to see that. And even fresh duck, and you can get fresh duck, fresh chicken, fresh quail in the market and their eggs. This is my favorite. You smoke the eggplant with a lot of garlic and then you add eggs. And the key element in this recipe is turmeric. You have to add turmeric. Turmeric adds a, a flavor to roasted uh, eggplant that is wonderful. Eggs, of course, again, with fresh tomato. Up to 16th century, Iranian did not have tomato. The Portuguese brought tomato to Iran from the New World. So we did not have, like Italian, we didn't have tomato, we didn't have tomato. Garlic chives omelet. Dark egg with fava beans and, and fresh dill. That's a wonderful vegetarian place. This is again fresh herbs, garlic, and eggs. They have all kind of. This is my, one of my favorite a tapenade, is, a, is egg, um, pomegranate, walnut, and olive, fresh olive. And it's one of the ancient tapenade. I have reference of walnut and pomegranate olive goes back at least to 4,000. We have records of the utensils, they, they crush them together. 2,000 BC? Yes. Probably 4,000. 4,000 years ago. Yeah, 4,000 years ago. I would touch by this site because these days you see so many misinformation about Iran and Iranians. But I want to see that side of kindness and gentleness and love. So I was very impressed with this husband and wife. <laughs> no, you you, no. Yes, actually, I was so impressed and adored him and took picture. And uh, they told me come to lunch. We were four of us, my driver, uh, my photographer and my assistant. She took us to, uh, and she cooked for us. We had a fantastic meal. The hospitality of Iranian people is- Najmeh, your rice timer is up. Okay. I have to wait because this is important when the, um, I'm gonna wet this towel. And I'm gonna put it- Do I see you? Do you see me guys? Yes. I'm going to put it on the counter. Is it off? Oh, you sure? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to put this right here. You hear that? Yes. Yeah. That noise is a good sign. This way, the the uh, rice, rice separated from the pot. The, the, the golden cross separates from the pot. You keep it like that, you cover it, keep it for uh, five minutes. If you do longer, your tadig becomes soggy. If you do less, it doesn't separate. So that's important to keep it covered on a wet towel for five minutes. Okay? Dolly, can you count that? Yeah. I have this. Okay. This is dark pomegranate braise which is most beloved dish in Iranian uh, culinary tradition. Um, they cook the dog in 
pomegranate juice and they grind the walnut with uh, garlic and onion and fry them together and add them to the pot and cook it very slowly for three hours until the duck cook, totally cooked. So duck fesenjun, which is a sweet and sour, is one of the favorite Iranian dish. And they serve this over rice. Rose petal. Rose petal is one of the cherished spices in Iranian cooking. We use rose petal a lot in our spices. Uh, this is a restaurant in the Caspian. Do you see that double uh, layer uh, of Kadik, Golden Cross? Uh, we had a uh, Kebab is marinated in pomegranate juice and herbs for 24 hours and they cooked it on open fire and the, the rice and the fish and all this trimming was so lovely. This is a castle in Fuma, which is, we are still in Caspian. Famous Fuma scone. On the road to Azerbaijan was most beautiful road and all this white flower, actually it was the month of May. I think it was the month of May. The weather was so lovely. Everybody was uh, picnicking outside. Iranians love to picnic. They love to eat outside. So we see a lot of people picnicking outside. And on the road to Tabriz, every stall makes this yogurt chickpeas soup, which vegetarian, and some of them serve cold, some of them serve warm. Um, and they serve it with kebab, fresh kebab. Now in Azerbaijan, I am making stuffed grape leaves dolme in Tabriz with this Hanum and her daughter. Tabriz in meatball is one of the most cherished meatballs because <clears throat> you cook the rice, you cook the chickpeas or the split peas or potato, you combine them together with herbs and, and you use lamb, ground lamb, you knead them for five minutes and then you fill them with fried onions, cooked eggs, apricot, prawn, barberries inside. And then you simmer it in the broth until it's well done and so delicious. And it has, it's an art, really. In Tabriz, the family that I was cooking, they roll out a beautiful carpet under an old tree, tree where we had our lunch. It was most beautiful. They had one fig tree, a small backyard, and they removed their carpet from outside and put it under it and serve us. They came from very humble background, but they had a very big heart. I am bargaining in the bazaar. Look at this sweet potato. They are so large. They still there are street foods in bazaar. With the beets and a sweet potato are very common street food. Kebab on the grill <coughs> in gallery restaurant. In Tab Tabriz, they are famous for their kebab, their kebab and the way they make the different kind of kebab and the marination is it's very special, the most delicious kebab. And <coughs> they invited us as soon as they met me and I told them what I'm doing. They invite us to the kitchen. So I, the chef shared a lot of secrets with me how to make good kebab. So it's in the book. <laughs> and this is a car carrot halva from Urumie, which is carrots and walnut. There's no flour in this. Carrots, walnut, and pistachios, uh, and almond as a decoration. This is a street food uh, halva. You can you find it. Five minutes is up. Okay. Good. So I'm going to. I'm going to put this on top and 
then turn it up. And when I was at Martha Stewart, as Martha Stewart said, this is the moment of truth. The camera just to back here. Is it good? Yep. Da -da -da. This is your tidy. This is a, see, this is crispy tadi. The tadi you see usually is very golden because they have saffron on top. This doesn't have saffron. So if the good tadi is crispy. Why didn't you add saffron? Because the saffron goes all over, doesn't go on the bottom. Why didn't you add saffron? Because I want to make it simple. So this is our dish. Rice, fish, and basil, of course. You take some of this. You want me to serve it to you, darling? Sure. Volunteer. Volunteer, monsieur. You Okay, darling husband. I'm going to come there. Enjoy it. Take a bite. And take a bite and tell everyone what do you think. Okay. <laughs> Rice feels correct. <laughs> the fish is tender. The dates are tempting. Here we go. The cucumber here. Mm. It's good. <laughs> so sorry that you guys cannot taste it. <laughs> oh. It's spicy. <laughs> Even though I would, uh, if you like the spicy, I love the spicy food. Very good. Okay. <laughs> now we had our food done. I said, well, okay. Well, this is carrot halva, okay. A cafe shop in Tabriz. The old man with their hookah and the young with their iPhone. You see that? Now we're in Ghazvin. Ghazvin is famous for their grapes. They have 100 variety of grapes and they have the best long green grapes. And if you go to the Iranian market, you should get long, long uh, raisin, green gray raisin. It's so tasty. It's not sweet, it's not sour. It's chewy, it's wonderful. This is a famous rice they call Qayme Nesar. They use a lot of rose petal in there. They make it with lamb or chicken. And this is candied orange peel, carrots, and chicken, and rose petals, and 
it's so good. You make the sauce, you make the rice. At the end, you combine them. Yeah. Fancy food. Yes. As we used to be capital of Iran, so there has a lot of before Tehran. Before Tehran. And the, the famous baklava is a layer of pistachio, a layer of almond. But because usually baklava, you put one layer of almond, Persian baklava. The Iranian, they don't use one lot. Their baklava is always with almond. And I make my own dough. I don't like to use filo dough, but you're welcome to use filo dough. And then the, something about this uh, baklava was special. They use almond and they dilute rose water with saffron and they mixed with the almond. So the almond was layer of saffron, rose water, almond, and layer of pistachio. And the syrup was honey, which was lovely. Hamidah uh, is one of those oldest cities, ancient city in Iran. And they're famous for their preserve because one of the oldest city and one of the coldest cities. So they use a lot of preserve. They're famous. No, they can mm -hmm. I just had some of this, the rice, you don't taste the rose water, but the aroma of the rice is something heavenly. Oh, fantastic. Combination. So they didn't put saffron in it. Yeah. Very special. Thank you for saying that, sir. <laughs> and um, bulgur noodle. Uh, it's very interesting. Iranian used to have eat bulgurs and noodles up to 17th century. Iranian were not rice eater up to 17th century. Rice become part of Iranian cooking after 17th century. Actually, there is a there is a poem poems written in five, 1500 is a battle of rice and noodles. So rice become a winner. So uh, it, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, rice originated in China and noodle originated in Iran. Uh, when I was in China, I noticed the best noodles made in China, but in, in Iran, they make the best rice. So it's so funny, even though the rice didn't originate in, in, in Iran, but Iranians, they uh, cultivated uh, the, 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 the cooking rice in the best way. Hamidan has one of the oldest Iranian Jewish communities. Hakim knew Muhammad with his family, with his patient servants. He was said to have been the Nasir Dishas special doctor in the 1890s. Um, the, 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 still, I think Hamadan had the largest Jewish community. This is a sweet sesame bomb specialty of Hamadan. They make it with turmeric. And it's a finger twist. Uh, also, they serve that on the top of this bomb, which is made of egg white. Why upside down tulip? on the road, it's the specialty of this region. It's very unknown, very, excuse me, it's very uh, unusual, upside down tulip. Wallad and sumac meatball, it's one of my favorite. Iranian, they have so many meatballs, in every region. They make chickpea meatball every region of Iran. They make, they give different flavors. Uh, so it's such an art to make meatballs. So in my cookbook, I have a lot of meatballs. I love meatballs. Iranian are, uh, they have this nomadic background. Uh, so Kurdish are one of the, tribal region of Iran, and their food is very special. Leila, um, she was a cook, a Kurdish cook. She cooked with me all day. At the end of the day, she dressed up and she said she wanted to take a picture with me. So um, this is a tarkhine. 
is a very famous Kurdish soup. They actually, they make a tablet of dry ingredient of bulgur yogurt is dry, then they soak this in water and they add herbs. So it's, it's a ready-made soup. Uh, but I give you the fresh uh, ingredients to make your own soup. Or you make your own. Uh, yeah, and also I give tablets. you the tablet too, how do you make it? Uh, what I noticed that meatballs in Kurdistan was different shape the rest of the Iran, and the flavor was wonderful. I love the stuffing. In, in, in Kermansha, they make so many varieties of stuffed vegetable. This onion, baked onion filled with rice, it's wonderful. Another dish which I loved, I loved all the Kurdish food, was white bean braised. It says white bean with a lot of chives, that's all. You can cook it with lamb, or you can cook it with chicken. It was so much, uh, it was very flavorful. Another dish which I'm going to make it for uh, uh, for fundraising for is, for Leda, is saffron barberry braise, served with saffron rice and golden cross tadig. Actually, the tadig will be very crisp, crispy. This is a very delicious dish. A Kurdish wedding in Kermansha in that is 1940s photo. <clears throat> Kermansha is famous for his rice cookies. When I enter to the store, no one look at me, but they whisper the ingredients and the secrets of the recipe. <laughs> so I have the recipe before. A nomadic family on the road up to Isfahan. Is famous for his uh, woodworks and miniatures. Architecture. Architectures. Sorry, I, I think I had, I had a cold or something. No, I think it's just allergies. Maybe. Uh, this is saffron yogurt lamb neck. They cook the lamb neck all the morning. They remove the bones. Then they beat the yogurt with spice, with the candied orange peel, rose water, and they add it to the lab. And then they serve it. They caramelize the barberries, pistachio, walnuts, and put it on top. This is one of the most delicious dish of famous of Isfahan. Shikpi meatball with tomato sauce, which I loved it. And carrots uh, with chickpeas is another patties which I loved it. Uh, preparing the soup for the day of remembrance in Ashura. Eswan has the largest Armenian community. Armenian was yeah. invited. Yeah, there was invited, but was it the Invited by? No, I think invited is the wrong term. Okay. <laughs> they yeah, immigrated? Right. <laughs> well, it's, uh, because they were very good with their uh, uh, handicrafts. So they came there and uh, was it Nasser and Nisha? No, no, no. Shah Abbas. Shah Abbas. Shah Abbas created community for them and they, uh, they, and they did Sorry. a lot of yeah, handicraft in Iraq. Now we're in Khorasan. Khorasan, which is, is in, in northwest of Iran, is the center of saffron. Northeast. Yeah, north, yeah, yeah, yes, northeastern. Northeastern Iran, I'm glad that you're in Dali. Northeastern Iran uh, is the center of saffron because, as the French said, terroir is just right for cultivating saffron. In, in, you need a uh, special climate to cultivate good saffron with, with uh, uh, color, good color and aroma. This is saffron uh, crocus, should be purple crocus, saffron flower. The inside is the stigmas, the orange one. 
is very labor intensive because they have to remove by hand one by one the stigmas and the result is this. This is all the stigmas removed from the flower and they bunch them and then they dry them. What they do with the flower I noticed was lovely. They give it to the lamb and sheep in the region. That's why the the leftover petals. The, the residual of the, uh, yeah, leftover of the petals. They feed the lamb and sheep. That's why the special kebab, the lamb rib kebab in Khorasan is very famous uh, because of the aroma of saffron uh, in the, in the lamb, lamb ribs. They marinate it also in saffron, which is double saffron, and it's lovely. Barbary grove. Barbary is, I think, I haven't seen any other cuisine. I think it's special to be Iran, uh, Barbary. Uh, but I saw in China, they use it as a medicine. Uh, in Iranian culture, they said you should have Barbary every year because that, that has helped. It has a as help you to, um, it's sort of as a cleansing power, it's help you. Can I interrupt of... just to show my plate? Okay, you did a good job. <laughs> Thank you. So, um, again, get your spawn really from Iranian market, but be sure they don't sell you a brown barberries. You want red barberries. Brown barberries belong to the old last season. You want red barberries, which is belong to this season. But these are dry, right? Yeah, dry, of course. This is the fresh one, which is lovely. Bar I have the recipe barberry marmalade in my cookbook. Dry barberry, how do you use, use dry barberry in different dishes? I, even with my meatloaf, I put um, barberry on the top as a glaze of barberry on top. This is barberry soup. What does it taste like? Uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's not cranberries, but it has some touch of cranberry. It's not raisin as this. It has a very instinctive flavor. Distinctive. Distinctive flavor, but at the same time, it has a lot of nutrition properties. That's why, you know, you have is it to sour? Have... Yes, it is sour. So that when you cook barberry, you have to caramelize it uh, with one te teaspoon of um, uh, grape, molasses. grape molasses, date molasses, or sugar. I use, for one cup of barberry, I use two teaspoons of grape molasses. So you don't want to lose the sourness because that's important. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some people don't. This is a, this soup is famous in, in also in the Khorasan region in Bijan because that's come from the wild, wild pistachio, uh, which they call the peste bane. I don't know what is it. Uh, it's come from Terabit. Yeah. I haven't seen it here, but uh, it's uh, one of the delicious soup. It's vegetarian. It has no yogurt in it, but it's creamy because right. they mix it with yogurt. And your recipe is with regular pistachio too. Yes, my recipe is regular. Try it. You grind the pistachio with hot water and you allow it to cool. Then you put a bunch of herbs and raisins. That's so, so lovely. Yeah. No, no yogurt. No yogurt. So where's the liquid? Water. Water. That's it. No yogurt, no cream, but it's very creamy. Because and it's a cold soup. Yeah, it's cold. It should be very chilled. Chilled. Good. Yeah. The potato cuckoo with saffron is, and glaze it with syrup. And this is lamb neck again with bulgur soup. And deep fried bread. This is every country, but they make this stew for giving away to the less or insecure, or less fortunate or insecure people, Economic. economically insecure or food insecure people. <laughs> Yazd, 
center of uh, Zoroastrian minority in Iran, still as a community of Zoroastrian, is which your group of priests from the community. Their famous soup is shuli, it's vegetarian. And then the Yaz are famous for their sweets. So I was invited to this uh, workshop and I, I was witnessing all these cookies. So I have the very good recipe of cupcake. And this is cotton candy. I'm having fun with cotton candy. Yaz is the famous for the pomegranate. This cypress at Abar Khan, Abar Ku, uh, estimated about 4,500 years old. Can you imagine 4,500 years Cyprus? Living, 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 that's right. And this is during harvesting the pistachio in Kerman. Actually, Kerman make the best pistachio. Actually, American pistachio seeds originally come from Kerman. That's why they call Kermani pistachio. In California, there is a region they call Kerman. Kerman pistachio. On the road to San Francisco. Yes. San Francisco. Remember, we took a picture of that. Did you put that in the slide? I love the way he's hugging his fresh pistachio. This is pistachio and pomegranate meatballs. Pistachio, lamb, rose water, saffron, and fresh tree. They're famous. This is a famous uh, cookies. Kuluche is, is stuffed with uh, dates and pistachio. Walnut. This one. And walnuts. This, they have different kind. Sistan and Baluchistan. This is my. She's my host. She was a lovely woman. She came to the market with me. And we went to, uh, she took me to this spice shop. All these guys, they were very computer savvy. At the same time, they knew a lot about spices. They said we gave, make a lot of spices. This is me, I'm taking picture of all these spices. They stuff the fish and then they wrap it in a, um, wild palm leaves and they grill them. The flavor is so you got a sardine? You got a yeah what you can do any kind of they did it their sardine is so big there. She mother and daughter in Baluchistan Charbahar they are making date cake they mixing dates and flour. Now we're in Shiraz Inscription on Cyrus tomb in Pasargad, according to uh, Plutarch, the Greek biographer. Oman, wherever you are, whoever you are, and from wherever you come, for I know that you will come. I am Cyrus, founded the empire of the Persians. Judge me not. Therefore, this little earth that covers my body. I am at the, the uh, Hafez tomb, the 14th century Persian poet. She's one most beloved poetry, <coughs> poet, and, uh, and people love his poetry. <coughs> Plant friendships tree. The heart's desire is the fruit it bears, and uproot enmity, which brings sorrows and care. I'm cooking with these people in Shiraz. Their, their famous dishes is horabi with herbs and rice and meatballs. That's tangerine rice. They're famous for noodle sorbet, rice noodle sorbet. This lorry kebab is one of the delicious and most tender kebab. They cut the meat. You can do it with chicken or lamb. 
they marinate in the thick yogurt with just onion and a little bit salt. And the next day, they cook it on the open fire. It's so delicious. They call it lori kebab. Of course, Iran burger in every major city in Iran, you see, you have these fast food burgers. Actually, their hamburger is delicious. No McDonald's. <laughs> no McDonald's. This is Khuzestan. Karun is the longest river in Iran. Their famous dish is a stuffed branzino and grilled, or actually grilled in the tanur. It's so flavorful. Now we are in Persian Gulf. The only region in Iran which they use hot pepper. Very, this is their space. And this is a grouper, by the way. We catch the 14 pounds groupers in order to make a lot of dishes made with grouper in this region. And they have the best large pink um, shrimp or prawn. Most delicious. In the backyard of the restaurant we went, they're playing uh, music and they're reciting Chayyam, which Omar Chayyam. Omar Chayyam. I was surprised because the rest of the Iran, they love Hafez. That was the only region they love Chayyam. So come, clap our hands in joy, or we won't be grieved to the ground with our dancing feet. Angel hair noodles. Dry lime is one of the special of Iran. They, it has such a distinctive flavor. I have a lot of recipe in this book. They use dry lime. For example, in this shrimp beet ball, I use dry lime. I, in the rice with uh, fried onion, I use dry lime. In um, marination of the chicken kebab, I use dry lime. And here is dates, tree, palm trees. It's a season of uh, it's springtime. He is uh, trying to fertilize the dates. Helping, helping, helping to fertilize, to fertilize the dates. You know, on the top of the they tree. They call it scenting. Scenting, oh yes, scenting, because of the perfume. Perfume yeah. of the mm, female, the, the date, uh, the, the male that attracted. So that's why, did you know a female palm tree can fall in love with a male palm? These are all what they, in this region they believe. Did you know that local holds a funeral for a dead palm tree. So the date has a very important role in Persian Gulf in that region of next, next to you know, the southern of Iran. And then they have a lot of respect for dates. Dates is everywhere. And in the, I love dates with eggs, dates with rice, dates with fish, they make patties. And I love this woman, we went to her house she had this beautiful uh, oven, um, store, stone uh, uh, bread making uh, oven, and she uh, cooked this. She used date juice in her dough and made this. Is that the same as date syrup? Date yes, juice. yes, she used date syrup actually. That's better way. Now I have come to Hormoz Island. Uh, red earth, ochre, on the island of Hormuz, it's used to, in a salted pickled sardines called surah. Local believe that minerals in it strengthen the body. So everyone try to have a little bit of that pickles every day. So I was very surprised when they say Iran eat earths. That's why they eat earths <laughs> this way. So here I am thanking God. So this project is over because writing this book was politically, emotionally, and logistically daunting. 
but I did it and I'm glad I did it. Our team from left to right was Afshi, my photographer, my assistant Marjan, and our protector and bodyguard. He was a, a Kurdish, Kurdish driver, Jahangir. He was without him, I could not travel uh, throughout Iran because I did not have permission from the government. So we were scared everywhere. We did this uh, trip without the permission of taking photo. So we had to hide our camera. And um, so it was uh, scary, but at the same time it was good because if we get a permission, the government give you a guide, that guide is a spy. So that was something that we didn't want it. So I had this luxury into a, of, of visiting kitchens and talking to people and get the feeling of what's going on. Uh, thank you very much. I'd be glad to answer any question you have. Are you there? <laughs> Are you there? Yes. Yes, lovely. Fantastic. Najmia? Yes. I can remember at least 20 years ago, I'd say, when you spoke to Chow um, when we were meeting off Fox Hall Road and you brought barberry berries wow. and most of us had no idea what they were <laughs> at the time. You passed them around and uh, how things have changed. And Actually, certainly uh, I, I see books that I haven't bought yet. I, I, my collection of your work started with Food for Life as I'm sure many of ours did. But uh, anyway, this has been a delight in a lot Thank of you. us have followed you for a long time. Yeah, I actually Thank in you. California, last year when I was in California, I noticed that uh, a few contemporary American restaurants, now they have barberries in their mm -hmm. rice and they have tadik. Uh -huh. which I, right. That's my contribution <laughs> after 40 years. <laughs> Thank you. I want to say that about five, six years ago, I took one of your cook, cooking courses in Georgetown. Uh -huh. and I think it was the No Ruse course. Uh -huh. And it was absolutely wonderful. I remember carrying food of life back home from Georgetown. I live up by the zoo. It was the happiest uh -huh. book I ever carried. Oh. <laughs> I read it. I started reading it. It was right before Easter. And I thought, Easter meal is going to be Persian this year. <laughs> and I made a Persian feast. It was absolutely fantastic. My friends still talk about it. Oh, lovely. I'm so glad. I hope you continue cooking from it. <laughs> I do. And I'm, I'm in Germany now. And we get barberries in the market. They're oh. not hard to find at all. Oh, fantastic. Fresh. Yeah. You get fresh barberries? Dry. Dry. Because, you know, I thought they might, because I know in California, in, in London, they get a lot of fresh ingredient from Iran. They used to anyway, before COVID. Yeah, yeah. before COVID, yeah, you're right. Uh, that's, that's lovely. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. For the, nothing is uh, so, uh, what do you mean? Heart, uh, heart, uh, your heart, touching my heart that people cook from my cookbook and they're happy. Because I know when you cook from a cookbook, it doesn't come out good. It's really disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> Every recipe turned out beautifully. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I have a question about the, can you hear me? Yes, of course. I have a question about the crust on the rice. And I noticed the Chinese use rice cakes that are made that similar way. Yes. 
do you have any thoughts as to maybe which came first and influenced the other? Uh, I think perhaps uh, because the, 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 the cross is totally different. Oh, oh okay. Yeah, she's she's right. Right. So they did yeah, try to, the, Korea, the, the Vietnamese too, or they also do that. I think I, I think since uh, rice is becoming, um, Iranian love the rice long and separated. Chinese, they don't. And you're I'll right. <laughs> I try to teach my Japanese friends how to make Persian rice. He said, no way. In Japan, we lock our rice together. Uh, so I think uh, after, uh, from 17th century, Iranians are uh, the... It's court food. It's a court, of course. The court foods. Whatever document we have is from court food or military. We don't right. have any ancient do uh, document. So I think uh, Iranian, they try to elaborate it because we just don't make it with rice. We have with potato, bread, onion. You can put any kind of things in your rice. Uh, the, or for courgette, eggplants, on the bottom of the pot, then you make it different to that egg. So uh, I, I want to say the Chinese, perhaps, because uh, rice was originated there. In China, everybody, when I was there, everybody eats a bowl of rice, they have to. And, uh, and I, I don't know. I don't want to be chauvinist in that domain. <laughs> um, but I know Persian love their rice. They are the rice eaters. And the tadik, yeah. They fight over the tadik, yeah. Thank you. That's a good question. I have to think about that. <laughs> Naj, where did you move to that you got such a fabulous kitchen? Well, I am in Chevy Chase. Well, I'm in Chevy Chase. Kitchen. <laughs> I'm Chevy Chase Hanks. I'm in Chevy Chase, Maryland. And uh, yes. Uh, Are you so going to do cooking classes again? I hope so. I hope so. I have energy, enough energy. I've been doing this for 40 years. I love to cook and I love to share my recipes. Uh, hopefully, if I have a strength and health, I love to do that. Um, uh, so uh, watch the one that I'm going to do for Leda. Oh yeah, I will. When, when um, I'm going to make it. I'm, I'm, uh, we are uh, taping it on. The taping, they don't care. Want, when's the program? The program for the spring fundraising. When That's, is it? I think now, many, this is being taped, isn't it? So we can rewatch the. I don't know. It is, yes. Okay, so you'll send it out. Yes. Uh, Najmi, the, the fundraiser for uh, Les Dames d'Escoffier, your session will be on June 16, Wednesday, June 16. No, uh, yes, June 16. Okay, yes. Zoom, is it a 16 Zoom? 16 or 12? Yes. What is it? No, no, they're going to tape it, but they're going to edit it. Oh. But they're going to show it for the, they're going to show it for the, it's not live. Right. However, it. however, oh, wow. Najmi will be there live to chat with, with the audience and to answer questions. Yes. Yeah, yeah on June 16. June 16, yes. What time is it at? I have no idea. Uh, her calendar says to 7 Sheila, do you know what time it is? Uh, it's yet to be decided. Just um, yeah, I'm waiting for them to. Uh, we we will send a uh, uh, email, save the date uh, for the people who are on the email list for Les Dames de Scaffier, DC chapter. Okay. Yes. Can't it here at six to seven p.m. Six to seven p.m. We have it in our calendar now. Najma, I had a question. Okay, darling. <laughs> this was a wonderful presentation. You mentioned a kind of raisin that you like very much. Yes. There's so many different kinds. What was the name of it, please? Uh, yes, I'm going to show it to you. There is no Persian raisin, the long one. They might give you something else. They say that's Persian, but you should know 
Which one is Persian? I'm very sure. Green raisins, nectar. Nectar, green raisins. This is the raisin, I'm very sure you. See, these are long and chewy and green. Do you see that? Yes. Thank you. Is yes. there a name for them? Uh, Kishmishe. Golden. Some people call it golden raisins. But oh, okay. Golden. But they're not the same as the California golden raisins. Oh. They're different. Right. They're slender and long. Okay. And not too sweet. Oh, so delicious. See, you see that? It should be long. No, they don't see this. You turn it up, up there. Okay, thank you. Yes, and I know that store. Thank you. You see that? Yes, thank you. Yeah. And I have two other questions. Go ahead. Um, you you mentioned you you showed a pic a picture of some women in the market, and it was in the early part of the slides, and they were buying a paste. Yeah. It was yes. a brown they paste and a green paste. What was the yeah. green one? They call uh, they call cash. Kashk is, is fermented yogurt. Actually, the yogurt, when they, uh, from the beginning, they remove the milk, uh, they remove the butter from the milk and they make it yogurt and then they cook the yogurt and they become kashk. And then when they cook the kashk. Kashk is white. Yeah, kashk is beige. When they cook the kash, it become black. So you saw black. What do they call that? They call black cash. No, I mean in Persian. In Persian, in Persian they say karvarut. Karvarut. Ur karvarut. Kar means black. Karvarut. And then uh, when they put different flavors, herbs, uh, herbs, they become green. What kind okay. of herbs? Uh, they, they put uh, thymes. They put uh, different kind of herbs to make it green. Uh, when they are fermenting it. So if you cook the, your yogurt, you have to beat your yogurt, that's one of the, because if you cook it, it become um, uh, curdles. So you, if you beat your yogurt for five minutes and then cook it very slowly, long time, then you'll have cash. No, but you have to have a certain type of yogurt. No, there be any not, yogurt. not, you have to make homemade yogurt. Okay. Uh, it doesn't have preservative yeah, it because be it, yeah, because it when it's uh, press, actually it should be sour yogurt. One of the, uh, I have the recipe in the book. Anyhow. Okay, I'll check it. And yeah, but you can buy it. You can buy cash from Persian store, and it's wonderful a sour agent to add your to your soup. Um, it's not. Fatty, because they, they, they remove the fat. Uh huh. I'm going to see if I have cash. Yeah. Now, talk about the difference between hard cash and this liquid cash. Yes. The, in Iran, they make a tablet and you soak it in warm water and then you. Why do they make it in the tablet? Because it's easier to travel. Sure. Yeah, because it's sun dry. It's not cooked in the oven. Yeah. See, I have it here. See, I'm going to show you the cash here. Do you use it like you would tamarind or pomegranate juice? Yes. You, it's a sour agent. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to show you, uh, what did you say there? Isn't it more like sour cream? It yes. like sour cream. Yeah. Sure. Could you substitute sour cream? Yes. If you can substitute sour cream with this. I'm going to show you. I dilute this a little bit. So this is a cash. Great. You Thank you. Yes. And then this is a bottle. I like this kind. If you want to take a picture, there are a variety of cash in, um, in the market, yes. Persian market. This is a cash I like because women making it. So that's why right, perhaps. You're a good advertisement for that store. <laughs> I mean, I have um, 
there are there are several in Vienna there are a store I also like it too uh, they call Yas but this store it's good because uh, next to it there's a nice um, there used to be restaurant now but after COVID they made it carry out you can taste some foods because they make good food and also if you like it you can take some food and um, I think it's the biggest store and they have variety. So it's become much better now that it's opened up. Yeah, it's much variety. And uh, uh, I like the store. And, and, and uh, the father died, the two daughters, the last 10 years, they're running the, the, the market. So I like to support them. And I did a lot of uh, advertisement for them because the two women, they were college students, they had no idea their father died. All of a sudden, they had to take over the business. So they needed a lot of support. So it's nice things. As a women's group, we support owner of the uh, restaurant or market that owned by women. Oh, thank you so much for everything. You're welcome, Dan. Nadia. In 1978, I was on my way to India for the International Con Anthropological and Ethnographic Conference, and the plane was stopping in Tehran. This was Pan Am. And out in the field far away, they allowed the people that were disbarking off the plane, but they made the rest of us stay on the plane. But I was determined to at least put my feet on the ground in Iran. <laughs> when nobody was looking, I snuck down the stairs and just put my feet on. And they started, everybody started yelling at me. And I came back up and went back to my seat. <laughs> I was determined to, to step down in Iran. Thank you. I hope, I hope one day we all can go back. Inshallah. Inshallah, that's right. Because, uh, you know, it's a beautiful country, wonderful people. Yep. And bad government. Bad government. <laughs> and the handsomest men. Uh, yes. Very handsome men. And women, too. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> where where husband, did you meet your husband, Nash? Uh, we, uh, he went to, he came to America, he studied here, I came to America, we didn't know each other, we both went back to Iran, we met uh, us, we met each other in Iran, and, 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 and uh, uh, arranged by family, uh, friends or family, uh, in a party actually, it was a, uh, friends invite all these bachelors come from abroad, they didn't know each other, so I saw him, I, fell in love with his mustache. And, <laughs> uh, so last uh, 43 years, we've been married. So he's, he's helping me a lot because when you, when you get older, you need help. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, I like to put an injection in. Um, I'm having trouble doing the chat. Can you hear me? We, I can hear you. Okay. Um, I'm Chinese. And in our home, when we finish dishing out the rice in our bowls, there's always some rice stuck on the bottom of the pot. And we do brown it to make it like your uh, rice dish. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And um, sometimes myself, I just take that instead of the white rice. <laughs> and the other thing is we sometimes also pour uh, water and heat it up so you have a soft crust with that brown crust. And wow. a lot of times when people are sick or like a diabetic, they will eat that crust brown because they say it burns off the starch. Wow. So um, you may not see on a large basis on a family style, you will have your regular white rice but there's always that residue of rice that's on the bottom of the pot. That's right. And that is brown. We do it slowly. Uh, you don't see that because I think that's more of a home type of uh, cooking procedure. Yeah, so that's why I think perhaps Persian took that idea and elaborated the made this famous golden crust. 
we don't because between China and uh, and Iran there was a long silk there was a lot of back and forth. They know there was silk traveled, but it's, it wasn't just the ingredient. It was techniques, literatures, music, everything. There was a lot of things back and forth. There is a possibility a Chinese traveler shared that idea to a Persian. We never know. <laughs> I, I just like to know that it, it is done too. We, we just don't have the wide bottom pot like you did on yours, turn and serve it as a dish like you have on a yeah, platter. Well, yeah, for Ledam, I'm going to do a more elaborated right. with saffron and yogurt on the bottom. Yeah. And when you turn it, you see that golden crust. Najmi, I have a question about um, the table manners. Uh, or is there no table? How, how do you eat? Do you, I saw a, uh, a photo of everyone eating on a carpet outdoors, but that was a picnic. How do you eat indoors? And do you, indoors, use, yes. do you use a fork or do you use your hands? Yeah, in, uh, at this um, stage in Iran, Iran, it depends which period you're talking about. These villages, they always eat differently from people from the capital or the city's people. Here too, uh, all over the world, the, the, world, the way people live in village is different from the cities. Uh, still, uh, they eat with their hand and spoon. But in the, the cities, they eat with spoon and fork, not the spoon and knife. In, in perhaps two person, they eat with knife and fork. But majority of Iranians, like Italian, they eat with spoon and fork. Like Italian, they eat it with their pasta. As Iranian, they eat it with spoon and fork. The city, the village, they use a piece of bread, like lavash bread, as their spoon. In the villages, they eat it with their hand. Um, and majority of people, they they spread a special tablecloth on Persian carpet. You know that Iranian, like Japanese, they don't allow, or like Turkish, they don't allow people to come with the shoes to the, to the house. So you have to remove your shoes when you walk in the house. So you do, the people that especially eating on the Persian, uh, they spread a nice cloth specially made for that on the Persian cloth, Persian carpet, and they display all the elements on that cloth, which we call it spread, or in Persian, they call it sofre. Sofre means spread. So they have, they spread, uh, they uh, spread uh, on the carpet, and they also, they spread all their foods. They put pickles, rice, mang. There is no such a thing as entrance Entree, like a French do, salad, and then they put everything on a spread or on the sofre or, and now majority of Iranian in the city, they eat on the table. So they put them on the table and then each person serve themselves according to the fancy. There is no rule. You eat your salad at the end or at the beginning. No. If you don't feel like it, you don't eat. So that's the result. If you're vegetarian, you can enjoy the, your meal as much as you, if you're not. They put lamb, pickle, vegetables, fruits, salads, everything goes on the table and you, you serve yourself according to your tiles. Sure, and one thing is very important uh, for Persian table, pickles and fresh herbs platters. It's very important. You know, we have basil, mint, tarragon radish and a spring onion on a plate, piece of goat cheese next to it, toasted nuts next to it. And this is on the table with a lot of bread because there was a lot of uninvited guests arrive so they can always feed them with a glass of hot tea. The national drink in Iran is now hot tea. Tea is very important. But up to 19th century, Iranian were coughing it. They weren't 
Whose dog? Somebody's dog here. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's your dog. What kind of dog do you have? What kind she's, of she's she's a, a lap dog. She called a Cavachon. Oh, I, I used to have dog. We had the dog for 26 years. We had German Shepherd. I love dogs. So, uh, so there is no rule. Uh, you have, uh, you can eat. Oh, how adorable! Look at this. <laughs> how are you? What's your name? Uh, what's your name? <laughs> this is Ladybug. Ladybug. That's beautiful. <laughs> beautiful dog. Oh, I love that. So there is no, there is no room. You. There are lots of rooms, but it's not. I mean, you know, in, in, when you eat, you should not talk too much. And when you say something, you should say something pleasant. On the table, you should not mention something um, uh, unpleasant. This is a no bad news. So it's no, bad for digestion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, calmness oh, is really important. Thank you, but you still talk. And some, yeah, some ancient mm -hmm. Iranian. When they had their main, I mean, we have records that Iranians, they, when they eat the main dish, they didn't talk. They talk when they removed the main dish and they spread the new uh, souffle, and then they put wine and small sweets, fruits. That was a time for socialization. And usually they did it in the garden. The, this, this, the desserts, uh, was in the garden with the wine. So that's the ancient Persian, they were wine maker and wine drinkers. And wine was very important. Still Zoroaster, you have every ceremony associated with wine. So pre-Islam in Iran, people were wine drinking and wine making. But, but I have to tell you, they didn't eat the wine with the main dish. They eat the wine always with the dessert because they did believe that you should not eat, drink wine when your stomach is empty. Mm -hmm. So you get the pleasure of wine with your dessert. Actually, uh, dessert, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, it's the name, 16. The name comes from Names come from French, means, the French word means desservir, means you remove. Yeah, they, they clear the table, remove the main dish. But the ideas of, of dessert come from Persian. Herodotus, the, the, the Greek historian, mentioned his book, in his book, the Iranian book, they love sweet. After the meal, they believe a little bit sweet, they have the digestions. And, and he said that the, the Greek, they don't know about the sweets, but Persian, they do. So the concept of dessert, sweets after the meal, actually very much can be Persian. Do, do men and women eat together? No, no. No, they, no I have a news for you. Every, uh, the boyfriends live in the house with the girls. Now things have changed after revolution more than ever. But uh, yes. Before revolution, after revolution, they eat together. The family, they eat together. And a lot of things happened in Iran inside the house that the government doesn't know. So <laughs> and, <laughs> and the parties, very elaborated parties, man and woman, they they eat together at home. Yes, a lot of a lot of Canadian. French, still living in German, still, I met a lot of foreigners in Iran. And a lot of people have dogs in Iran. And there is a lot of misinformation uh, about Iranian well, the culture. Government policy, though, is one thing. Yeah, the government, <laughs> you're right. It's like children in America not being able to drink until yeah. they're 21. Yeah, that's right, but they all drink. My children. <laughs> They all drink between 18. Yeah, that's right. So uh, now, 
men and women, they drink, eat together. In the village, it's more freedom, actually, than cities. And uh, in the village, I noticed the villages in Iran hasn't changed much because the villages, they dress differently. They had always a scarf around their neck. To keep, no, up the dust. to keep up the dust because they were working in the field. The village's life hasn't changed before revolution and after revolution. But the city's life has changed. People have double life, one in their private home, one for the government. So things have changed a little bit too, also. Uh, Namia, I want to thank you um, for your time, your knowledge. We've learned so much on so many topics. You've taken us, you know, into your into the food, but as well as the political system. Maybe it's just been fascinating. I think a lot of us could stay here for another hour or two. Um, mm -hmm. But we do want to, you know, thank you again. Thank you for being so generous again with your time. Um, I, I see some of us have needed to leave already. We do have a couple business things to take care of. Um, but again, thank you so much for spending uh, this afternoon with us. Thank you for I having can't me. Wait to, I can't wait to try these recipes.